the name of this program is Milwaukee 2015, um, Water, Jobs, and the Way Forward. And we thought it was important to talk about the public sector's role in this water initiative in the uh, greater Milwaukee area. And to do that, we've invited uh, uh, two very uh, well-known uh, members of the uh, public sector, uh, Mayor Tom Barrett, seated immediately next to me, and the Chancellor of UWM, Carlos Santiago. So thanks very much for being with us today. We appreciate that. Uh, we started with the uh, business panel this morning, and we asked them uh, about uh, their vision of the next five or six years. Where do we need to be by 2015 as we seek to become this global water technology hub? And they all offered some pretty interesting thoughts, and I thought we begin by giving you the same opportunity. Take a couple of minutes, tell us what your thoughts are about what we need to be doing in the next five or six years. Mayor, I'll begin with you. Well, I, as I thought about this program, I thought about um, a movie that I liked uh, many years ago that uh, I recently watched, All That Jazz. It's a good movie. I've, it's got some racy parts, so be careful if you're <laughs> going to show it to your children. Uh, but there's a song in there, uh, Everything's, Everything That's Old Is New Again. And in a sense, it made me think about Milwaukee and its history because, as the governor just said, and I'm sure other speakers have said, Milwaukee grew up around water. This is why we're here, because of the water, Lake Michigan, and obviously the three rivers that, that feed into Lake Michigan. Um, and it was, it was that confluence and, and the economy that grew around water that made us become, and this is something I've heard Rich Musen say, a wet industry city, long before anybody knew what wet industries said, uh, what industries, wet industries are. <clears throat> now, in 2009, as we look around this country, as we look around this world, it becomes obvious that wet industries uh, and regions of the country or the world where there is not access to water become even more in play. <coughs> and so, to me, it means that this is our strong suit. This is, this is what we should be leading with, is the fact that we have this great resource right here, and we should build off it. One of the things that Rich Musen and I put together this summer was a column talking about the whole notion of, for lack of a better term, a water TIF. Um, a TIF is a tax incremental financing district. It's something that local units of government use to compete against others, quite honestly, to lure investment into a community. So all of us are using that tool. Uh, all of us are using other economic tools to try to convince businesses to stay or expand here. To me, one of the really unique opportunities is can we use our water to help us create jobs? Uh, and Don Sykes is here from Workforce Investment. Carrie Lewis is here from the Milwaukee Water Works. And to me, this goes right to the sweet spot of what we have. Our comparative advantage is water. And so if we can create jobs by luring companies here or having them expand here in areas where there is high unemployment and by working with the Public Service Commission, which would be necessary to do, and lower their water rates in exchange for creating jobs, all of a sudden we've got a competitive advantage over some, some other communities, not only in Wisconsin, but more importantly throughout the country. And to me, that's the most practical step that we could take, is how can we take this natural advantage, comparative advantage, and create real jobs? Because I think every person in this room agrees we have to create more jobs in this region. That's what led to the growth of this region was this water. Let's use it again. Let's be careful with it, but let's use it again to help create jobs. Chancellor, I'll have you uh, address this question. What do we need to be doing in the next five or six years? Um, that's not a lot of time, I'll uh, admit that. But what we need to do is to uh, agree that the, the fundamental goal uh, by the end of these five or six years is really to be a magnet. Uh, this region has to be in a position to compete for the best talent, whether that's talent in academia or talent in the industry sector or talented students, uh, we have to be in a position for, to compete for that talent. And that's one of the things that uh, Milwaukee has not been able to do, uh, and I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers. I can go back uh, 30 years where we were the, the manufacturing town of the nation and uh, many of the jobs have left. And we still have, uh, in some sectors, some advanced automation that we need to, to maintain. Uh, we have water. Uh, we need to support that. And we have to become a community that attracts talented people. Now, we can disagree on how to get there, but I think we need to agree that that's the ultimate and the fundamental goal. If we attract the talented people, we will create the jobs. We will create the wealth in this community. Uh, we will create the solutions that this city, uh, this region, and the state needs. 
How do we become the magnet that you speak of? Well, I think um, uh, critical investment. I think we, we have two things going for us right now, from my perspective. Uh, we have ideas, and I think we have good ideas coming from a wide variety of people, and we have a lot of hope. And those two things are very, very powerful. You may say, well, we still don't have the resources. We have a, uh, at UWM, we have a School of Freshwater Sciences that has been approved by the legislature, but it hasn't been built. We haven't admitted students yet. Uh, we had uh, $10 million uh, that was uh, uh, provided to the university in the 0709 budget to start hiring people in, uh, uh, in some of these uh, related fields, uh, and that went away. So uh, we need to build up that infrastructure. We need to build up that investment. But right now, we've got ideas and hope. And uh, without either of those two ingredients, we'll never get to where we need to be. We've got those two ingredients. Now it's a matter of building, it's a matter of communicating, it's a matter of garnering wider political support for what we're doing. We're going through a difficult budget year uh, uh, for the state, and that impacts our university. But we're creating the partnerships. Uh, you know, this is the first time, I believe, that, that I've been invited to a Marquette <laughs> event. Um, I, <laughs> besides... <laughs> uh, I, but, I don't know if I should take credit for that, well, or I think, I think or I should win the Nobel yeah. Peace Prize <laughs> but, but, for bringing uh, you together. But yeah. we had a few uh, a few months ago. We had an event at UWM that I thought would never happen, and our new dean of engineering, uh, who has been in communication with the dean of MSOE and the dean of engineering in Marquette, and they've worked very well together. And he said, Carlos, we've got a meeting at the UWM Student Union, and it's to announce this big collaborative agreement. And I said, OK, who, who are the partner institutions? And he said, uh, Marquette and MSOE. And I said, and, and who's going to the event? And he said, well, Herman Vietz is going to be there, and Father Wilde is going to be there. And I, I said, you know, uh, his name is Mike Lovell. You know, Mike, if you get the three of us on one stage in UWM, that would be a huge accomplishment. And he did. So, you know, you may say, oh, those are symbolic things. Those are, you know, those are important things. The, the, the fact that these institutions realize we need to work together, we either sink or swim together, uh, is, is a huge accomplishment, I think, for this region. We need to do more of it. When I hear Rich Mewson, I mean, it's interesting, he was talking about that industry academic uh, collaborative NSF grant. What really struck me was, and I'm aware of the grant, we're, we're, we're you know, the originators of the grant with Marquette, but he was referring it as our grant. Our grant. When have we heard a business leader refer to a university-wide initiative as our grant? And I thought that was phenomenal. I thought that was wonderful. That's buy-in. That's people that are believing what we're doing. So we have that going for us, and we just can't lose that. I want to come back to that uh, discussion about buy-in in just a moment, but, but I'll ask the mayor to expand upon uh, his thoughts. Um, how, how, what is the most effective way, in, in, in your view, of getting out the message that Milwaukee is ready to do these things in terms of water technology? How do you think the message should be communicated to those other cities, to those other businesses? Well, I think that there are mechanisms in place. The Milwaukee 7, I think, can do this. I think business leaders who have customers and have contacts, they probably are our best ambassadors because they speak the language that the other business people speak. But th th just to let you know why I think this is so crucial in real time, in July of this year, there was a federal judge that told Atlanta that it could not take water out of Lake Lanier three years from now. Okay, that it's going to have to stop taking water out of Lake Lanier. Now, that may change, may change in a higher federal court, it may change with an act of Congress, but it's not going to create more water. It's either going to mean Atlanta gets the water or Alabama gets the water, or whoever the fight's between is going to get that water. There is going to be a loser in that fight. That's happening around the country. It's happening in the Southwest, it's happening obviously in the Southeast now. So, businesses that rely on water as part of their production technique are going to start have to asking themselves, if I can't get this water in Atlanta, or if I can't get it in Alabama, or wherever, where can I go to get water? Here we are. We, we've got it right here. And again, that's what we have to do. And, and the turnabout is fair play. I grew up here. I remember when the Milwaukee Braves played their last game here, and they moved to Atlanta. Uh, I don't want the Braves to move back. I'm happy with the Brewers. Uh, but there would be a little poetic justice in having us have some jobs that now are in Atlanta coming to Milwaukee um, 40 years later. Could you see yourself, uh, could you see yourself going down there and, and literally meeting with executives of companies and saying, look, 
you need to consider Milwaukee. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I think business leaders, I think university leaders, I think political leaders, I've done that before. And, and I think part of our challenge here is we, we do have some good wet industry. Obviously, we have Miller here. We've got bottling plans for, for other companies. So we want to retain those. So as we create incentives for new companies to come in, we don't want to sort of slap the ones that are here. So that's why, and I'll just, again, give you sort of a real world example. On the northern part of the city of Milwaukee, we've got the old Tower Automotive site, A.O. Smith. Many, many acres of land. It would be a perfect spot to say to an employer, you want to create jobs, you want to, and you use water, we'll help you. We'll go to the Public Service Commission with you. We will try to give you a lower rate for water in exchange for creating jobs here in the heart of the central city where we need to create jobs. It, it, to me, there's wins all over the place by doing that. And it, it takes mm -hmm. a tool that doesn't exist everywhere. That's the key. It's, it's a tool that can't be used in other parts of the country. We've got that tool here. Let's take advantage of it. Given the process, how soon is something like that realistic for Milwaukee, where you would make that offer that you'd have cheaper water if you locate businesses in a certain economically distressed area? Well, it would be something that we would need legislative approval for because it's right. a new financing mechanism. Uh, and then it would require presumably on a case-by-case on a -case basis, public service commission approval. I think we could have that done within a year, year and a half. Uh, Chancellor Santiago, one of the things that, that uh, we heard from the governor is that uh, even though times are tough right now, you, you can't, you just can't stop. You, right. you have to make investments in education, in mm -hmm. research. Um, the question I have for you uh, is, given the state of the state's finances, mm -hmm. uh, can we realistically look for help from state government to to go, I mean, beyond what you've, right. your university has already gotten in terms right. of the, the College of Freshwater Sciences, but, but um, can we ask uh, the state to do much at this moment in time? The state still has to uh, make the investments. The state still has to decide, and while the decision has been made in terms of our mission, the state has to decide whether it fundamentally wants a second major research university in this Region. I mean, in this, in this, uh, in the state, you've got Madison, you've got UWM that are explicitly as part of our mission research university. We're not funded as a research university, but that is our mission, and our research has grown. It's doubled over the last five years with minimal investments. We have some opportunities. Uh, the governor spoke about the capital plan of 240 million. That's huge for us. That's huge, and it's not so much the amount of money that is, that is crucial, and yes, we have to raise 60 million of it. It's the flexibility that the state has provided. And I will, uh, you know, if, if when times are tough, what you want to do is trade off. If you're not going to fund us, give us the flexibility to do things differently. Uh, and that's what we've done. And we've built uh, uh, the equivalent of $80 million by next summer to residence halls without a dollar of state money. And the one that we built on, on North Avenue, the first one took 20 months. Well, they gave us the flexibility. We did it privately through the UWM Foundation. That would not have happened. The last time we built a state-financed uh, residence hall, uh, Kenilworth took eight years and Sandberg Hall took 13. So, you know, we don't have the time to wait for the state to simply say, we're going to give you these dollars and you go ahead and you, you build what you need to do. What we need is if you can't give us the dollars, give us the flexibility to do things a little differently to help keep the process moving forward. I have to address this issue of jobs because uh, I asked this this morning of the business panel. Um, let's face it, when you're trying to build momentum for an initiative, you need to demonstrate progress. There need to be visible signs of progress. This conference is called Water Jobs and the Way Forward. Um, and the question I asked this morning was, don't we at some point have to demonstrate uh, to the people out there of this community that jobs will come with this? And, and people are impatient, especially in today's world. They're saying, when do the jobs arrive? Well, that's great. I, I love hearing about that. It sounds like a great idea, but when are the jobs here? How do you view that, uh, Mayor Barrett? Uh, um, what do you say to people who are impatient and want to see signs of visible progress? Well, I think as, as it relates to water, jobs are already here. You've got... You've got Badger Meter, you've got Miller, for example. Again, you've got uh, other companies that use water either in processing their products or in, in actually making their products. Miller has lost some of the management jobs to Chicago. It's my hope that those ultimately will come back here. Um, but it's also created a lot more jobs for people who are in the production of, of making beer. So a good portion of the jobs that have been created here, and again, we have had a terrible, a terrible economic downturn locally as well as nationally, but one of the bright spots, has, bright spots has been production at Miller. 
I think that people have to recognize that going back 100 years, we have been a water technology center. We haven't recently marketed ourselves as a water technology uh, center. If we do that, I think we can expect, as companies start to expand, that we're going to get that. It's not coming overnight. I think anybody who comes in and says that there's going to be this economic rebound overnight is just trying to sell you something. But, but I think if we take a, a steady path towards building off our strength, which is our water, I think in the long run that's the best, best strategy we can use. Uh, did you want to clarify Sure. Uh, and I think, you know, the governor uh, said uh, that this is different from the way Madison's biotech industry has been created, and it is. Uh, the startup companies are, are, n are coming from the universities here in, in southeastern Wisconsin are not fundamentally going to be growing the majority of those jobs. They'll grow some. But it really is the existing companies and the partnerships that I think are, are, are what make this region unique. So this is going to be a little different from the way that, that Madison has expanded the biotech industry. And it takes a long time. And I know there are skeptics out there. But, you know, I came from a community that... <laughs> In fact, 15 years ago, uh, its president became, um, and I was provost and chief operating officer, its president started to talk about Albany, New York, which was the third largest, is the third largest bureaucracy town in this country after Washington, D.C. and Sacramento. And she started referring uh, to the town as Tech Valley. And everybody thought she was just you know, crazy. There was very little techno te technological innovation occurring in that tri-state area. Um, and in fact, 15 years later, uh, we, and, and about 10 years ago, we, we created uh, uh, the nation's first graduate school of nanosciences on the campus. That enterprise, uh, with state and pro public and private investment, is now $4.5 billion worth of investment. Uh, it is a, um, a complex that now has two, in addition to the university, has 250 companies with R&D operations there. And uh, a year and a half ago, it uh, landed uh, an uh, agreement from AMD to build a chip fabrication plant, which was the end goal all along. It took 15 years. But the end goal was to build chip fabrication in upstate New York. And, and it'll happen. It'll happen. It can be done. It takes persistence. Uh, it takes knowing what the, the end goals and uh, there, are, there are bumps on the road. But these jobs, and I'm not saying we're going to replace the manufacturing jobs we've lost, but we have to start restructuring this economy so that we can compete. And we have to keep advanced automation here. We have to keep that intellectual capital in this uh, part of the state. As long as we're at this moment in the conversation, I probably should have you address, uh, I, I mentioned the word buy-in earlier. Right. And, and one of the professors at your institution, uh, who, whose name Academic I mentioned. Academic freedom. Academic freedom. freedom. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, uh, 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 says, uh, says that, that, that this is overblown, that, yeah. that being an entrepreneurial university is just simply overblown. There aren't many success stories. And the ones that did occur, occurred for a variety of reasons. Right. that Milwaukee's not that unique. Yeah. Your response to that? Uh, yeah, and um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm an economist. I've published in this field. I know this field. I've read the report. I disagree with the me methodology, the analysis, and the conclusions. Other than that, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but I think the real, the real problem I have with the report, uh, apart from that, is it has worked. And can, I, can we guarantee this is going to work? No. The problem I have with, with those analysis, what's the alternative? Does he present an alternative? Does he say, this is the wrong road? Let's, let's not go left. Let's go this, this way. No. So what, what, again, I go down to ideas and hope. And I don't, you know, it's an idea. His response is an idea to what we're trying to do, and I disagree with it. But I think what, what it fundamentally does is it tries to kill the hope in this community. And that I really have issues with, because this community needs hope. And we've got a mayor who has been saying this since, I mean, you came to office when I arrived, and that was the message, that we can turn things around. I mean, when I got here, you know, were we going to see crime rates go down? I mean, the, 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 the view was no. And we have uh, made some, some important changes. So I fundamentally <coughs> hope, uh, have hope, and believe in this community. So there, you know, it is a university. There's academic freedom. You can say what you want. Um, as an economist, not speaking as chancellor, as an economist, my view is put it out to peer review. That's what we do. When you have an idea, if you have a, an idea for a better mousetrap, you put it out to peer review and publish it. So we'll see what happens. Oh. 
Uh, Mayor, uh, we talk about hope uh, as being one uh, uh, part of the equation, but you're trying to do some things. I mean, you gave the example earlier of, uh, of the, the Tower Automotive Corridor and what could be done with cheap water and how you could lure businesses there. But in the meantime, you're also doing things south of downtown uh, in the Reed Street Yards area. Uh, describe for folks what the vision is for that piece of property in the next five or six years. Well, it's something we're working with the council on right now to, to create a a water district, in essence, it's it's close to UWM's Southside facility where where they have water research. Um, so it's a natural tie in there. It's near the river that feeds into Lake Michigan there, um, and we think that that's a location that could really key off this in in other regards. Obviously, on the north side, I'm hoping to get technology and job production there. Mm -hmm. This would probably be a little bit more white collar-ish, if you will, researching. And we want to create jobs in both areas. We have to create jobs in this community that, that fit both of those metrics. We have far few jobs in this, in this community for people with low educational attainment. And so we have to put a premium on both increasing the educational attainment, but at the same time, creating jobs for people with low educational attainment. That's sort of what I'm thinking of in terms of the Tower Automotive site. The Reed Street Yards is the area, as you come o over the Sixth Street Viaduct heading south, once you get south of Harley-Davidson Museum, that's the area that we're talking about here, where we're working with the Department of City Development and others to create a TIF district there so that we can have water-related industries that would tie into what UWM is trying to do um, with its Freshwater Institute, ultimately. And how would you market that to companies? I mean, Again, the same way. We, I, you market it by marketing it. Say that we've got the water, and, and this is something that we think that your business may need. Come take a look at us. Uh, I think if we, if we don't do that, then shame on us. If it, this is our... Again, I'm going to say it over and over again. This is our comparative advantage. We have to sell our comparative advantages. We're not going to sell winter weather. <laughs> <laughs> Reed Street Yards is a, is a visible sign. Rich Musen said uh, earlier this morning that he would be very concerned if another visible sign, the School of Freshwater Sciences, wasn't out of the ground mm -hmm. in a year, year and a half, two years. He said that would be a very that would be cause for concern about yeah. this whole initiative. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. And uh, uh, it's, it's no secret that, uh, that we've had proposals to us. I mean, it's, it's kind of nice to be wanted. We've had proposals from all along uh, the, the, the lake, uh, from Port Washington all the way south uh, uh, to, uh, to relocate our facilities. And uh, uh, the reality is we have a huge investment on Greenfield Avenue, that facility, which uh, was a former tile factory, uh, and for 40 years the Great Lakes Water Research Institute has been there. Nobody knew about it. Um, we have a 50-year-old, 55-year-old uh, uh, Navy tender that we use as a research vessel. That has to change. We have to get a new research vessel, a state-of-the-art research vessel. We've got to transform those facilities and transform that area so that it can attract uh, the best talent. And I think, I think we can do it. And, and I, I've talked to the mayor about it, and he's, he's going through some difficult budget times, no doubt about that. But I think to the extent that the city can, can help us redo Greenfield Avenue and redo uh, that part of the city, I think that'll be, that'll be good for everybody. So uh, we've got some capital dollars. We have grants out to, uh, uh, to, to redo the facility and to integrate the school into that existing facility. We have the land to do that as well. There is expansion land uh, around it. We need to move a coal pile. Uh, we need to deal with the railroad trestle. We need to maybe tear down a few buildings. But, uh, but those are all doable things. So, you know, I, if, if, particularly if we get this, this significant grant that we have out uh, to, uh, I believe it's to NOAA, to, to redo the research facility, we can have, you know, shovels in the ground, so to speak, uh, in the next year. And that, that's important. You, you agree that's hugely that that's, important. that's huge. Huge. We need to get a shovel in the ground somewhere. <laughs> uh, and we need to do it quickly. Have you been surprised at all about the, the community's reaction to the, the, the siting issue for the, for the school? You mean the initial yes, site? Exactly. Um, not really. <laughs> uh, things in Milwaukee do generate a, a lot of interest in different ways. And, uh, and we weighed the pros and cons of, uh, of being there. And you know, if you ask, where did the site come from? Well, it came actually from, uh, I was at, a, at a, uh, what eventually became the Water Council, but we were in a retreat. And, uh, and I was part of a subgroup that was asked, how do you envision the water 
you know, if Milwaukee's the water capital, what vision do you have? And our committee went round and round, and we didn't know what, what to do, and I was sort of the spokesperson for the committee, and I got up, and I said, well, let's think about this. You get off uh, at Mitchell Airport, you jump on a train, you drive down, you know, get on the train all the way down, you, you can stop uh, the tracks near Greenfield, you get off and there's a beautiful facility uh, in a location, and then you, you get on the train again, you go a little farther, you're on the lakefront, you're next to the Calatrava and Discovery World, and you enter this facility that really is a welcoming facility and it has students and it has researchers, and, uh, and, and I said, you know, that would be a great sort of view of what Milwaukee could be. And you go to a, you know, you go back to the Greenfield site, you see this huge research park for your company, you, you sign agreements to, to do R&D or to set up a plant, you get back on the train, you go to Mitchell uh, Airport and you, and you leave. And, and I, I said, you know, that's what I think this could look like. And that's where the, the, the particular site between, I mean, it is a, a signature site in Milwaukee. Uh, it's just not big enough for everything that, that we want to do. It would um, put a research institute over here on Greenfield and put a school somewhat away. And, and while the site is important, you have to weigh, can that work? And I think, you know, at the end of the day, we decided maybe that's not the best site. Mayor, one of the uh, issues that came up this morning was uh, uh, having um, a, a trained, skilled, qualified workforce. And, and you touched on this earlier by talking about education. It seems like almost any discussion we have about economic development in this community does get back to education at some point. Um, what do you think needs to happen besides a, a change in governance at MPS? I mean, is that, is that the key to, to changing the kinds of kids who, who are able to do the jobs of tomorrow? Well, I, again, I look at this community having lived here my whole life and, and remember driving down Capitol Drive, and I'll go right back to the Tower Automotive site, which was then A.O. Smith, and being a seven-year-old kid and driving past her and see row after row after row of car frames, and just how cool that was as a kid to see that was sort of this ultimate Tonka toy Lincoln logs at the same time. But what it meant for the people who live in this community is as recently, and this will show you my age, as recently as 1970, this city had the highest per capita income for African Americans in the country in, in major cities. Because we had these great factory jobs and foundry jobs and brewery jobs uh, and tannery jobs, and they started to leave. And those were the jobs where if you had a strong back and a good alarm clock, you could support your family. So there wasn't as much of an emphasis on education. And, and I'll say this again, we simply as a community cannot create enough jobs for people at the lowest end of the educational ladder, those transitional first jobs. We just, we can't. Too many of them have gone to China and have gone to India and have gone to Mexico. We can't create those. And that's the, the place where a UWM study has said there are 25 applicants, in essence, for every one of those jobs. Um, so we just, if, if that's the route we're going to take is to say we have to only create these low jobs, I don't think we can do it. So that gives us two choices. We either curse the darkness and accept that this is a city that's going to continue to get poorer and poorer and poorer, or we put an emphasis like this community has never seen before on educating young people, particularly young people of color, because it should be an embarrassment to everybody in this room that this state has the largest racial achievement gap in the nation. That should be an embarrassment. People should be angry about that. But that means we also have to find a way to, to raise that educational attainment because the jobs that are being created are the jobs that require more education after high school. Uh, and that's where you start having, ultimately, as the baby boomers retire, you start having labor shortages in those areas where you do need more skills. So if those jobs and those employers look at Milwaukee and say, okay, they've got water, but they don't have the workforce to do it, then we're still going to lose. And so that's why I, I cannot think of a time in the history of this city when education is more important than it is today to allow us to compete both nationally and, and globally. And, and that's why my blood pressure goes up on that issue, is we just, we just have to do a much better job. And, and I know that we've got issues, huge issues of poverty, of teenage mothers, of dysfunctional families. To me, those are all explanations as to why this is harder. because. There's not a person in this room who I think can understand what those families are going through, the difficulty that they have. But 
that means we have to work all the harder for, for those children because they're our children. But at the same time, we have to put an emphasis on creating jobs of all types so that, so that we do end these cycles of poverty. So I, I do think education is extremely intertwined with this. At the same time, we have to be able to try to attract those employers with jobs, and that's why I said at, at different parts of that socioeconomic scale because we're gonna need jobs all over that scale. So you see there's absolute linkage to what we're talking about in terms of a water initiative and, and the education of the workforce. Absolutely. 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 Linked. And again, some of the jobs, and I think the jobs that, that Carlos talks about are jobs that are more education related. And I think that's great. We need that too. But I, I not only want to attract bright people, I want to create bright people mm -hmm. here. I want us to create more bright people in this community and, and more young people who can perform jobs higher on the socioeconomic scale. Chancellor, are, are we, uh, I'm sure you believe that, that your university is unique in the sense that uh, because it does have the, the Great Lakes Institute and it does have this funding now for uh, the School of Freshwater Sciences, but, but one of the things we keep hearing about is who are we competing with and other cities having the same idea that we have and, and if you know, we don't move quickly enough, someone will come along mm -hmm. and be that next global water technology mm -hmm. hub. Are there other cities we should be keeping an eye on? There certainly are cities on the international uh, level. Uh, there are uh, even Great Lakes uh, cities that uh, uh, are interested in moving some of this forward. Toledo is one. And you know, we're working with them. And, and I think- In what sense? Well, we, we, uh, we've uh, sent uh, missions out to them to do joint research. Uh, we are looking at uh, joint faculty projects uh, between uh, faculty in Toledo and faculty in, uh, uh, at the Great Lakes Institute. Uh, Ann Arbor is interested in moving some of this forward. So there are competitors. You know, I, I and, 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 you know, competition's good. Uh, I'm a, you know, I will push uh, Milwaukee and UWM uh, as, as hard and as fast as I can. But, but at the same time, there's enough space for us to do, for all of us to do some, some things in this, in this arena. And I don't see it um, uh, exclusively as, as Milwaukee's gonna, you know, I mean, be the only place that some of these things happen. I think water, the scarcity of water and water-related issues is just gonna rise and other cities are gonna naturally express an interest in, in moving in our direction. I simply hope that we're the leader that they look to us and say, this is a good example, uh, maybe we can do it better than Milwaukee and we'll try, try something else. So, uh, and that's not a bad thing either. Uh, but I think we have a unique opportunity here. Uh, you know, the School of Freshwater Sciences is, uh, and it's now that it's approved by the legislature, is the nation's first. The nation's first school of freshwater. There are, you know, uh, schools of marine biology uh, all over the place, but focusing exclusively on freshwater sciences is rather new and novel. So that's something we've done out of the block. We'd, let's take advantage of it and, and grow it and get its, its reputation, uh, build its reputation so it can attract people. So uh, competition is good, but I don't, I, I don't spend all my time worrying about what the competition is doing. But this goes back to how we market ourselves. If you, if you think of the product that's probably the best known product in the world, it's maybe Coca-Cola. Maybe I'm offending somebody from McDonald's or something else, but Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola does not stop advertising itself. It just keeps going out there over and over and over again. And I think for far too long, we've allowed people from outside this region to to really label us. And, and what gets the burr under my saddle, the source, is when people talk about us as the Rust Belt. Uh, if, if I have any request for everybody in this room, it. it's that you never use the term Rust Belt again. Because if you think of that term and you think of the term Sun Belt, was, was that drawn up by someone who lives in the northern part of the country or the southern part of the country? <laughs> Rust versus Sun, which, which conjures up a nicer image. And that's why what I've said is over and over again, let's talk about America's fresh coast because then we're identifying who we are, it identifies our economy, it identifies our environment, it, it identifies our recreational activities, and it's who we are, it's, it's a true sales mechanism. And it's, it's much easier, I think, if rather than every time I pick up a national publication, it refers to us as a rust belt, it said the fresh coast, I think right there, you'd have businesses and business executives' spouses who say, okay, let's look at that. Because you're not gonna get a lot of business executives or business executive spouses to say, yeah, let's move to the Rust Belt. It just, it's just not gonna happen. But you will get them saying, let's go to the fresh coast. And then it's about marketing. Uh, we just heard the governor's comments, uh, and we'll take questions here in a moment. Um, so here's the final question for you, uh, Mayor Barrett. Um, what kind of difference could a governor 
uh, make in this, this effort? Well, I think... <laughs> a loaded, loaded question. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike, for that question. I, th I think part of the job of the governor is, is to promote the state in a huge way uh -huh. and, and to say this is something we're proud of. And I think throughout the state of Wisconsin, again, we've got all these lakes, we've got these rivers. It is, I think it's an easy product to sell. We just have to sell it. Got any... Uh timetable for us or anything like that? We'll check and see. <laughs> Let me take some questions from the audience. Uh, if you have a question, please stand up. Uh, keep it brief so we can get to as many as possible and, uh, and ask away. Come back. You, you've got another question. That's great. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Dave Kleiber. I am the owner of SF Analytical Laboratories. I spoke earlier, but I'm also the incoming chair of the Cosby Board of MMAC. And on behalf of the small business community, um, I worry about how we can short circuit what you're trying to do and what we're trying to do through M7 uh, by not projecting an image of being pro-business. How can we get city council and the county supervisors and other entities that are in government to turn around and become pro-business and really make this a good climate because you can tell them about the fresh coast and about fresh water and how great we are with 120 businesses, a great university and all the stuff we're doing. But if we perceive ourselves and they perceive us as being anti-business, then how are we gonna pull this off? So how can we turn the corner, Mr. Mayor, to make this a good pro-business community? I think the way you do it is you do it through interpersonal relationships, by, by building trust, by building understanding. Um, let's face it, right here in this room, there's, there's not a lot of people who live in or work in the central city of Milwaukee. And so how do you create trust, and, and more importantly, how do you create hope in the central city? And, and it's what's, what's in it for me. For every single elected official, it's what's in it for me, and by extension, what's in it for the people I represent. And so that's why, for me, to talk about the Tower Automotive site, it's a part of the city where there, there isn't enough hope right now. And so I'm able to get, I think, a buy-in from, from some of the elected officials who represent that area, because they're thinking, okay, I might be able to create jobs for the people in my, in my district. So I think it's, it's trying to make people understand that even if it's not geographically located in a specific aldermanic or county supervisory district, that it will create some jobs that will benefit people who live there. But then the challenge is businesses need to hire some of the people who live there. And, and unfortunately, those are the pockets where we've got by far the biggest unemployment, in part because of the education issues, in part because of other issues. But, but we all have to, as a region, realize that we're in this together. Whenever you have, whether it's business people or elected officials who don't feel like they have anything in common, that's where it starts breaking down. So I, I'm a firm believer that you can make that happen, but that means listening as well as talking. I'm not saying that to you specifically, but, but I think understanding, because a lot of times, even when I've had disagreements with ele other elected officials, and I hear them out, I, th I can say, okay, I understand where they're coming from. So how do we, how do we address their concern? Um, and I think it takes more work, and it takes us getting a little bit out of our comfort zone. Everybody likes to sort of stay where they are, elected officials, business people, but the people who are most successful, I think, are those who are willing to cross-germinate, if you will, and, and go in places where they, they have It really is attitudinal. It is yeah, attitudinal. At, at both ends, at yeah, both ends, it's that's attitudinal. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You bet. Other questions? Well, I have a question. Um, the governor said something interesting. He, he was saying there are differences and similarities in the biotech experience mm -hmm. in Madison and what we're trying to do in this region. Um, it seems to me that the, what's happened in the Madison area has been embraced by, by the state. We see that as a very positive uh, development for the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we had a gentleman ask a question, uh, how do we get buy-in so that people around the state feel this is not just a Milwaukee uh, initiative, but this is good for the entire state? Um, I'm wondering if I might have each of you comment on that. Uh, am I reading that wrong? Do people see this as more than just a Milwaukee initiative, or do they see it as something that is of value to the entire state? I would think that people from around the state would like nothing more than to see 
more economic success stories coming out of Milwaukee because I think the view is that a lot of the, the, the issues that the state has with, whether it's prison costs or Medicaid costs, things like that, are disproportionately located here. And to the extent that we can do this, I think they'll be happy. And, and going back to what the chancellor said before about crime, there's nothing that a mayor of a city likes more than to see the banner headline in the newspaper, crime down statewide, comma, led by Milwaukee. Um, and I think obviously that's something that I like to see here, but I'm thinking someone in Stevens Point or someone in Wausau is thinking finally, you know, and, and that we're, we're starting to make progress. So to the extent that people have watched the poverty grow in Milwaukee, anything that we can do to create more jobs here, I think they feel will free up resources for their part of the state. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't view it as an us versus them a dilemma that some people view it as. It is sort of a ticklish situation, though, yeah, is it? Because you no. touched on the fact that Madison is viewed as right. the research university. And, and I'll, I'll turn that question around because um, I, I was here earlier when the question was raised, and, and I do have some issues with it. Um, and, you know, the question was raised, well, how can Milwaukee align itself with the state? And I'm saying, you know, my view is, you know, um, why don't we turn that around? When is the state going to make the investments so they can be aligned with what we're doing? I have no problems with water initiatives across the state. Uh, I do have problems with our changing either our focus, our direction, or whatever we're doing here to align ourselves with things that are happening somewhere else. If, you know, if, if you're going to really collaborate with us, if you're going to invest in us, we'll be part of that partnership. But uh, I don't see our changing our focus or moving in a different direction to simply satisfy directives that come from other parts of the state. I've seen enough of that. I've seen enough of that in Milwaukee. I've seen a lot of that at UWM. And I basically said no. You know, we'll, be, we'll, we'll play with anybody. But you got to make some kind of investment. you got to make the investment in, in the institution. And we'll, we'll sit down and have, have that conversation. You know, the days of UWM taking a, you know, an old tile factory and converting it into the Great Lakes Water Institute, a former munitions plant, uh, and, uh, and converting it into, you know, Kenilworth now. I mean, the days of our simply accepting old facilities that nobody wants are over. And, and I've said that, I've said if, you know, this is, at the end of the day, we have to have state-of-the-art facilities, we have to have state-of-the-art equipment, and we have to have faculty that, and students that are going to push the frontiers forward. And I think we've got to take that position. I think we have to take the position. We're not going to set, settle for second hand. It just is, is not going to work. And if you want to help us reach our goal, we will do everything we can to support you. If you want to direct us to serve a wider interest, then we're going to have to have some serious conversations. Mm -hmm. But I also, if I can, I also think yes. that it, it complements what other parts of the state are doing. You look at Door County, you look at Vilas County, the whole Northwoods, it's, it's water industry. It's a different type of water industry. It's recreational water industry. You go to the Dells area, it's clearly water industry there along the Mississippi River. So it's, it's not a stretch where they're thinking, oh, it's Milwaukee, it's totally different. It's, it's a variation on the theme, that this state has its, as its strength fresh water. And it's both recreation, it's both travel for some, and it's job creation. So to me, it all fits together that we're promoting water for this state because it's not just our strong suit locally, but it's our strong suit throughout the state of Wisconsin. One of the things we talked about in promoting this event is, is pitfalls that need to be avoided in, in order for uh, this initiative to be successful. Uh, I'm wondering if you two might address that. What, what would be a couple of the worst things that could happen in the next five or six years that could derail uh, uh, the efforts by uh, a lot of people in this community? I would say the first one is over expectations, that we create over expectations that somehow this is going to end every problem that we face. It's, it's going to be a steady <coughs> climb. I hope it's not a slow, steady climb, but it's going to be a steady climb. But, but I keep going back to what I started out with. Water is an issue in many parts of this country, and those communities are trying to figure out what do we do right now. We see it 20 miles west of Milwaukee in Waukesha, where they've got a difficult issue in terms of return to the lake. That pales in comparison to what they're talking about in other parts of the country. So they're grappling with this issue, and, and in a sense, we're fortunate. We're grappling with the issue in how we use water to create more jobs. They're grappling with the issue with the how do we preserve jobs and preserve people who live here. 
um, it's a, it's a, the fact that it's a bigger problem there makes it a bigger opportunity here. Chancellor, what keeps you up at night? Oh, oh, I, I think making promises we can't keep. So what you said, expectations, is very difficult. Um, making sure that there's enough trust, uh, because we are different. We are working with institutions that that function differently. You know, the private sector works in, in one particular way. They want you know outcomes right away. They want you know push uh, as fast as they can. <clears throat> Universities operate in a slower environment, much more consultation. It takes a long time, and um, I, th I think the cultures have to understand each other. <clears throat> And, and have enough trust in each other to know, you know, you might not be able to get everything done by tomorrow, but I know that two weeks from now, you'll, we'll get something done. And, and I think that's very important. And I think we've, we've developed that. I think we've, we've, we've gotten sectors of this community talking, not all the sectors, I think there, there are some sectors we need to bring into these initiatives. Such as? Well, I, I think we, we do need to bring in, 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 in some sense, we need to bring in the, the central, central city into these conversations. And we need to, even on my campus, you know, one of the, the, the biggest conversations I have with my own faculty, staff, and students is for them to understand that this is not a zero-sum game, that I'm not gonna take money away from the humanities and from the arts and the fine arts and put it into engineering, as some faculty believe. We haven't done that. We've done all this on our own with new money in one way or another. And I think we've got to get sectors of this community to basically understand that this is not a zero-sum game. That we're trying to expand that envelope that at the end of the day has got to create a bigger pie. And you may complain about how that pie is cut, but if that pie does not get any bigger, we're all in, in, in difficulty. So I, I, think, I think trust is, is very important. Anything you'd like to add? It's, I think it's in, our, it's in our court right now, and it, and it is a great opportunity. I think those who looked at this and said, this is something we should work on, I think that they um, have provided us with a lot of guidance and a lot of help. And I'll go back to one of the things Carlos said, if not this, then what are we going to do? And so I'm open, I'm open to ideas, but I think, I think that this certainly has the potential to, to move us ahead economically. So you don't think there's a chance, and like you, I've lived here a long time, you don't think there's a chance that this is just the latest big idea in Milwaukee, and five years from now we'll all go, oh yeah, remember that idea? Is there a chance? Yeah, there's a chance, but I think it's up to us, the people in this room, those who embrace this, to make sure that that's not the case. But I think the potential is there. Again, when I look at the real world and the realities of water around this country and look at where we are, <clears throat> thinking let's, let's build off this. Chancellor, final word. <laughs> I don't know what else, what else to add. I and think we've fine. got the challenges in front of us, but, uh, but I think we're moving in the right direction. Right. And again, I'll echo something the mayor said. If not this, what? That'll uh, wrap it up for this segment. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, Chancellor Carlos Santiago for visiting the Marquette campus. Um, Good to have you here. <laughs> we've got a lot of land here. Yeah. <laughs> and Mayor Tom Barrett, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark.